Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail uh, how to conduct an independent samples t-test. But the independent samples t-test where we assume that the samples, the two samples, have been drawn from populations that have unequal population variances. Okay. Uh, I've modified my sample data uh, from the previous videos that I've run uh, with respect to an independent sample t-test and also the f-test uh, just to ensure that the, the two variances uh, are statistically different to each other. I suppose we could calculate the f-statistic really quickly for these two variances. Uh, as I said, the f-statistic is before is equal to uh, the first variance, the variance of group A divided by the variance of group B uh, in our case here, this gives us an F statistic of 18 divided by 5, and 18 divided by 5 is a value of 3.6. So 18 over 5 is equal to 3.6. Uh, and with the appropriate degrees of freedom, uh, the degrees of freedom for the numerator is the larger, the larger uh, variance, which is uh, n2 minus 1 is 13. And the degrees of freedom in the denominator is 12 minus 1, which is 11. So with 13 and 11 degrees of freedom, the critical value uh, comes out to be 3.39, uh, in which case the F statistic would fall into the rejection region. So if you want to if you want to have a look at how to do that particular test, to test whether these variances are significantly different to each other, I'd recommend to have a look at the previous video in this series that dealt with the F test. And you will note and you will you will reject the null hypothesis of equal population variance. Uh, for in, in favour of the alternative that the populations or the samples have been drawn from populations with different variances. Uh, so it's safe to assume that the population variances are unequal in this particular in this particular scenario. Okay, so what we'd like to do now is we'd like to test to see whether these two samples, whether there's evidence to suggest that these two samples have been drawn from populations that have different population, that have different population mean values. Okay, and in other words, we need to undertake a hypothesis test. Uh, and once again, like in, in all the videos, there's a five, uh, five step process for undertaking a hypothesis test. Uh, the first uh, step is to define the hypothesis. Uh, like in all the other videos, we've said very clearly that a hypothesis uh, has two positions. It has the null position and has the alternative position. Uh, and that the hypothesis is a statement about the population parameters that we're interested in, in measuring. Uh, and in this case, it's a statement about the population means. Uh, this is just going to be a straightforward two-tailed test, where for us to show that there's a difference between the two sample means, it'll be sufficient for us to show that one is less than the other, or that one is greater than the other either way. Uh, so our alternative, what we would like to prove, is that the mu of population one is different to the mu of population two. That's our alternative. That's where our evidence will hopefully take us to. If the evidence doesn't take us to there, well then the null hypothesis would be that mu of 1 is equal to mu of 2. And once again, this is a two-tailed test. One of the later videos will deal with the situations where we have a directional test or a one-tailed test. So once we've defined the hypothesis, that statement about the population parameters that the samples have been drawn from, uh, the second stage is to define the significance level of our test. So our significance level, and for us, we'll just choose alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Okay? Don't forget this is a two-tailed test, so we'll be splitting that alpha into both of our tails. So we'll have an alpha over 2, or 0 0.025 of the area in the right tail, and 0 0.025 of the area in the left tail. OK, straightforward here up to this particular point. This is probably where it gets a little bit numerically challenging. Uh, but once again, it just boils down to subtraction, a bit of division, uh, square root, and addition, and a couple of squares in relation to calculation. So let's define the test statistic. So step three is our test statistic. Uh, we're relying on a t distribution uh, and a test statistic when we assume unequal population variances. The test statistic t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 all over s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared 
that's 2 squared over n2 and it's the square root of that so we have a square root of that and the degrees of freedom for the test now it looks a little bit complicated the degrees of freedom let's not have a heart attack yeah it's it's still straightforward it's defined to be s1 squared over n1 uh, plus s2 squared over n2 all to be squared and that needs to be divided by uh, s1 squared over n1 all to be squared and that needs to be divided by n1 minus 1 plus s2 squared over n2 squared to be divided by n2 minus 1. Actually, there's a shortcut that we can take in relation to these calculations. So there's not really too many calculations going on. We can probably see a lot of commonality between the terms in this degrees of freedom and also some of the terms in the test statistic. Uh, we have the value S1 squared, the first variance divided by the first sample size. That particular value repeats, you can see in the formula. And we have S2 squared, the second sample's variance divided by N2, the second sample size. That particular term also repeats in our formula. So when it comes to calculating the test statistic and the degrees of freedom, we'll do these individual calculations separately and we'll just plug the values in. Then it just boils down to addition, addition and a small bit of division. Okay. So we have our test statistic uh, let's calculate our particular values. And as I said, let's calculate first of all, let's calculate what S1 squared over n1 is. So the first variance squared, uh, sorry, the first variance is 5, and that's to be divided by the sample size, which is 12, which gives us, when we divide 5 into 12, 5 divided by 12 gives us a value of uh, 0 0.4166. So let's just say 0 0.42. Okay. Uh, the second term, which is s2 squared over n2, is the second variance, which is 18 divided by the second group sample size, which is 14. So we end up with 18 divided by 14. So we have 18 divided by 14 gives us a value of approximately 1.2857 or 1.2, 1.29. And I'm rounding here uh, for convenience, uh, just since that there's a lot of calculations going on here. Okay, so now we can calculate our test statistic. Uh, the test statistic T uh, is equal to x1 bar, the first sample size, which is 40, minus the second sample mean, which is, sorry, the first sample mean, which is 40, minus the second sample mean, which is 46, okay, minus mu1 minus mu2, which is our position under our null hypothesis, which, which is what we're assuming to be true. Uh, from our null hypothesis, we have mu1 is equal to mu2, which which then tells us, I suppose, that mu1 minus mu2 must be equal to zero. 